Hi everybody, it's Andrea Mercy, aka Anlum, and welcome to my studio. This is a super duper quick video. I just happen to have my uh, glue gun out to fix something uh, of my husband's, and it, I was getting ready to unplug it and cool it down. I said, you know what? I should probably uh, throw some of this out on my craft mat and do a little experiment. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to zoom in and uh, what I'm going to do is just make some random patterns like we did with the 3D paint the other day, um, but it'll be in the clear glue. And then once it's cured or dried, I will come back and maybe we'll make some colored mediums and pour it over and see what happens, see if we can get the clear all the way through. I, I've never done it, so I figured let's try this out. Seriously, I'm using clear glue sticks. I have no idea where the red tint is coming from. So either the inside of my glue gun has finally melted over all these years, or at one point, I have a vague memory of putting red wax through it. But that was like 13 years ago. Maybe even more. I can't remember. So I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure that's where the red's coming from. Um, also, I should have mentioned, this is a craft mat. This is a stick resistant craft mat. It's also heat resistant up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. So don't do this on your table. Uh, don't do this on acetate. Don't do this on a page protector. Uh, either do this on a craft mat like this, or if you don't have that and you possibly want to sacrifice your silt hat, because I can't guarantee what will happen to it, that's fine too. Or if I come up with another idea, I'll let you know down in the, the description. But for now, only do this on your craft mat. And there we go. So I will let that cure overnight, uh, harden up, and then what we'll do is we'll mix up some that Mod Podge, Mod Podge with uh, a color, and maybe some of the liquid medium. And I found my polymer, so we'll try that. We'll put some colors into it. I'll try and do greens, so it will uh, definitely set off against a little bit of a pink that's there. I'm noticing now on my last one there's less pink so maybe that wax got stuck in there all those years. I can't believe it's been that long since I haven't used my glue again. Anyways, we'll get back to you later. Hi everybody! I'm back. So this has now cured. It's dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up three different blends they're all going to be done with the same color paint. So this is the Amsterdam Standard Series. And this color is, oh, there it is, yellowish green. So I'm using the same color on all of them so that we can see what the results are just based on the medium that we've added. And I used green just because this is still reddish and it is from my red wax. I used to get red wax in the tubes that you could put through your glue gun so that you could melt wax and then seal envelopes with them. I had a company a long time ago where uh, I used to do luxurious um, correspondence, custom correspondence. That would, It was LCC, luxurious custom correspondence. And uh, so I would do cards and letters on behalf of other people and I put them on really expensive paper and then I'd seal them with red wax or with silver wax and I when I th sat down and thought about it after yesterday putting this on I'm like that's a residue and that goes back to 2004 or 5 like 10 or 11 years since that's been stuck in there <laughs> anyways so we're going to use the green 
I'm going to mix them with uh, gloss polymer. So this is the one I used at school. Um, the liquidy gloss medium. So this is a little bit thicker than the gloss me the Liquitex gloss medium, but it's thinner than the gloss gel and the matte medium. So I put three drops of paint in each one. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to mix these up, and then we're going to take three brushes and we're going to dump out and see what happens. Hey, uh, my time was not my own this afternoon. <laughs> I made plans to do this and then of course 50,000 other things came up so I figured I have time now, I'm just gonna do it now. All right, so this is with the polymer that I used at school. I'm just going to, so that's the same container of green. There we go. I'm going to spread this out so that's just polymer medium and it was a gloss. I'm going to see if I can, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to make some more. I'm not going to have enough. All right. So one, two, three blobs and another El Squirto, about that much. That looks like maybe a tablespoon. Okay, as you can see, that one's fairly opaque. So if we get to the end of this experiment and I don't like the results, I'm going to possibly redo it again once with a translucent, a more translucent paint because I'm actually surprised by how, how opaque that is. So this is the original three drops. I'm gonna add three, more and use the liquid text gloss medium. There we go. I believe this one will be more translucent than the other one, but you never know. I could be completely wrong. So, I'm so glad I named this an experiment, <laughs> so I don't have to look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> because truly I do not. This is very much so an experiment. Alright, let's spread. This is a lot more liquidy. I think I was a little bit over enthusiastic about the size. The pieces that I was doing. I don't think I realized how much real estate this covered. Well, let me see what I can do here. Thank God for cheap paint. Too bad for expensive medium. Well, 
again, thank God for cheap paints. And I changed my mind. I decided to use the Mod Podge instead of the matte liquid text medium. So, woo! There you go. There's a goodly amount. A goodly amount in there. And there we go. I'm going to let that cure overnight and we'll see what, what the results are tomorrow. Hey, we're back. So I just wanted you to know it's been two days since I poured this. Um, when I came back the next day, this one was still wet underneath. I'm not sure why that was the Mod Podge one and it I expected that one actually to dry fairly quickly uh, and then yesterday I was sick so here we are let's lift and see what happens so first of all uh, what I notice is that the paint that I picked was very opaque and so I'm not really getting much out of it and that side you can see where it was wet there and I was frigging with it trying to figure out what to do so um, I don't really like that but hey what do you do this one was this one was the gloss medium that was this one here and again with the opaque paint, you can't really see anything. So I'm not I'm not really liking this experiment that I tried. And this one would have been the polymer that from college. Woo. And again, ooh, that one is very stretchy. That one's, okay, that one's kind of cool. It's actually stretching and holding. I think I'm going to redo this with transparent paints, like a yellow or a transparent red. Um, because technically, I mean, it's not that you can't use this. I was hoping that it would be, it would be thinner and a little bit more see-through so that you'd be able to see stuff through it. So I'm going to call this an epic failure. <laughs> Of what not to do. This po this Mod Podge one here, this one's very thick. I actually expected that one to spread out more. Um, this one here, the polymer, that one spread out quite a bit. Uh, but it's still, because the paint was opaque, I'm not getting the result that I wanted. So, yeah. Not really liking the way that turned out. But, that just means that we now know what not to do. So I think I'm actually going to get the glue gun out again. I'm going to put some more down. And I think I'm going to try it with another, uh, with a more translucent color. Uh, a yellow or something like that. Or maybe even put some medium in it that will, oh, I have is that one ha I have a medium acrylic transparentizer I can add this to an opaque paint and make a transparent so that's what we're gonna do I'm going to say this lesson learned was an epic failure I'm gonna come back um, and we're gonna do three more I'm gonna put this in it uh, and we're gonna try again Okay, so we're going to go for experiment number two. I'm going to put out some smaller pieces with the hot glue gun again, and we're going to use the same paint and the same polymers and add the trans transparentizer and see if we can get what I was looking for. So we're just going to put out much smaller pieces so we don't have to use as much paint and polymer just to see if we can get 
what we're looking for. And there we go. So we're going to let that uh, cool and we'll come back and redo the experiment. Okay, this has cooled. I'm noticing that that red is coming out so I guess I'm almost finished pushing through that red wax. So I'm going to use the same paint and the same mediums and add this and see uh, what kind of... Okay, so we're go this is cooled now. Um, I'm going to use the same paint and the same mediums and I'm going to add the transparentizer and we're going to see if we can get some better results and if it doesn't work then this experiment is over. So I'm going to put in ooh, paint bigger, paint bigger, three drops, one, two, three, oh, and a little bit. I'm going to put in the same amount of transparentizer. And I'm going to put in, we'll do the Liquitex gloss medium first. Uh, no. Now, here we go, palette knife. Let's. So, oh, maybe not a little bit, maybe not as opaque. All right, I'm going to add, I mean, it, go big or go home, right? Like this is, this is the last time I'm gonna have to try this experiment. So I'm gonna, so I've doubled the amount of transparentizer and I'm going to, this is so expensive. I can never use this for an experiment again. I'm gonna have to, use the Mod Podge or the, some of the cheaper stuff because it's killing me to use that. All right, but we want to produce good, this is supposed to be an experiment, right? All right, so gloss medium on the first one. Now that transparentizer did not have any information about how much you should mix it, so obviously I was mixing it uh, two to one. However, it does say that it's supposed to dry clear and the um, gloss medium is supposed to dry clear. So I would like to think that between the two of them, maybe this will dry a little less um, see look there look at that. Uh, that it has potential to be very transparent there's potential I'm telling you again the whole point of this was to see if we could get a skin that would let us clear see through like obviously if I made a big huge blob you'd be able to create like a window and see through it I get that but the whole point was to try and see if we could get some kind of different effect. So one, two, three, and a bit. And then we're going to go with six drops of this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one will be the polymer. This one, the one that I use in college. I'm going to need to get myself some more of that. I'm going up to Ottawa. I might have to go and... I don't know where else to get that, to be honest with you. 
I'm have to look. Now, of course, one of the reasons why I can't get it thinner than it is is because the actual um, glue is quite thick. And when we did the other skins, when you poured the medium on, it self-leveled on its own. And this, I think, with the paint in it is too thick to do that. I don't know. This could just be an epic failure. Not that I mind epic failures. I usually learn from epic failures. Let's see if we can get this to... Let's see what happens there. Because it looks like it wants to... I don't want this to be a complete epic failure. So I'm going to switch to, uh, I'm gonna put a really, that's not very transparent. Let me get this one here. This one is really transparent. I'm gonna do one in a really transparent color and see if I can make some success here. So we're going to put a very transparent yellow. This is the one that I used in college, and we always complained about how transparent it was and that we had to put 60,000 layers on to get any kind of coverage. So we'll make that even more transparent with some of this. One, two, three, four, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's six. <laughs> I cook like this too. Oh, yeah, dash this, dash that. Probably makes people mental. And I'm going to use oh, Mod Podge. Just going to pour a little bit of that in. There we go. So one of these I'm hoping will be successful. And of course, I just looked down and realized I'm wearing my good clothes, my good jewelry. <laughs> But I just sat down and did this again without thinking about the ramifications. Oh, please don't let me get any on my clothes. I just need to be bibbed. All right. I have hope for this one, for this yellow. I have hope. I do, I do. chunky. I think that paint might have been a little bit chunky. Let's see if we can smooth this out a little bit. And then, yeah, if this doesn't work until I come up with a way better idea, this will be my last experiment with the hot glue gun. But again, I think that we should try these things. Because if you don't try them, you'll never one, you'll never know, and two, it's through experimentation that you find other techniques. Like, you know, maybe tomorrow when I when these are dry and I come and take a look at them, I go, oh, you know, that's really cool. That didn't work, but maybe something else did. And of course, I made too much for this one. I'm just spreading it out thin down here, hoping that. We'll see what happens after it dries. Maybe I'll get some other look. We'll see what happens. Because uh, there is a few things I am going to teach you that are on my list of things that I want to do videos on. And some of the stuff is really cool. And I only learned about it because I was trying to do something completely different. And I came up with a different result. And I'm like, that's really cool. All right. 
that's as good as that's going to get. I have now spread it all over the place, so I'm going to clean up, and tomorrow we will come back and take a peeky poo at that. We're back, and uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Whoop, whoop. Come on. There we go. All right. We're back. Um, as you can see, I got some minorly decent results. Uh, but again, still not what I was looking for. Because, like at the end here, where I really, really scraped it out thin, I got kind of a cool. I got kind of a cool skin, in the sense that I could I could see some stuff through it. So that transparentizer does work, um, but where it's thicker because of the height of the hot glue. I mean, it's still more transparent than it was before. It's still, it's just not what I'm looking for. So this one, I'm going to cut, I'm going to keep this here. I think this, uh, this is kind of cool. I don't think I'll be able to use this part where the glue is, but uh, I'm going to keep that one uh, just because I think I could maybe punch out some circles or something. I think that has some possibility. Um, these ones here. So, again, too opaque. Where it was thin, you can see through it. Again, I would have been able to see through that. So the transparentizer definitely works. Um, but because of the height of the hot glue, it gets really thick in there. So. I don't think that's any good. And then this one here, same thing. So I was going to finish up this video and say, oh, epic fail, epic fail, epic fail. And then I had one more idea. <laughs> and I'm not willing to give up until I try my last idea. So this idea, we're going to just lay out a little bit of hot glue here. And I'm only going to do one because the idea I'm about to use is potentially very expensive. <laughs> but I couldn't have an idea and not try it. I mean, that's that's just the way it is. So, ooh, let's see if I can scrape the rest of this crap off the edge of my palette. Well, this isn't a palette knife, this putty knife thing I have. All right, there we go. So I'm a hot glue gun. I have hot glue coming out. I'm just going to do a nice little uh, design. There we go. Gene, Gene, the music machine's going to kill me because that's not really a treble clef, is it? But I wasn't trying to do anything in particular. So while that cools, Here's my idea. I'm going to take my cheap Mod Podge. And I had purchased this a while ago. This is the Golden Acrylic High Flow. Um, it includes three refillable markers and, uh, and five high flow. So they're really, really liquidy, almost like a dye. So I was thinking I would dye this, pour it out on here this would dry clear, leaving only a really translucent tint. That's my idea. So um, there's iridescent pearl, fluorescent indigo, green gold, and dioxide purple. I really want to use that fluorescent pink. I don't know why. I'm not really a pink girl, but hey. So this comes with three markers, just in case you ever see this. So you have your uh, golden liquids, which is these fluid acrylics here. So this is fluid, and this is high flow. This is even more liquidy than these ones are. I mean, these ones are very liquidy. These are almost like inks. So I had bought this with a 40 or a 50% coupon off of Michael's. Let's see. Ooh. 
There we go. So we'll open this up. So it comes with these three refillable markers, which I thought was really cool because I had wanted to uh, try some refillable markers from Molotow, um, but they're really expensive. Oh, they really glued this in. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that was well packaged. So what you do is you put, I guess, the liquid in here with the beads. Um, I'm going to have to read about how to use that because I don't think you would put the whole, I don't, I think you would dilute that to put it in. I don't know. So you get the nice big one. And then I also get, woo, major mess. I also get a medium. This is a bullet point. And this one is a smaller bullet point. So. I'm going to read about that and we'll play with that one time. That'll be cool with those. So in my kit, I got iridescent pearl, dioc... I always had a problem with this one. Dioxazine purple. One of these days I'll have to learn to pronounce that properly. Indigo, which is a really deep blue. Green gold. And after my experiments, I'm tired of green. And then this fluorescent pink. Uh, is there anything else in here? Or is this just the box? This is just the box. Okay. So we will play with those refillable markers as soon as I figure out how to use them. Because that will be cool. So. This is almost cool to the touch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small amount of Mod Podge in here. Thank God for cheap mediums. Okay, a little bit of Mod Podge. And this, as we know from early experiments, will dry clear. Like that. Recap it. You know, for someone who didn't like the Mod Podge, I've become very attached to it recently. I've been using it for a lot of different things. Okay, so this is the high, high flow. Oh, let's see. This was a really expensive kit. I think that kit was probably 50 bucks at Michael's in Canada. I think that was like 50 bucks for that. And I got it for 50% off. So these are fairly expensive paints. And that obviously has a safety cap in it. And it does. There we go. There we go. Let's try not to spill the very expensive paint all over the place. Now, if I remember correctly, oh, and of course I'm wearing my good clothes again. Damn it. <laughs> I just got back from lunch and I was like, oh my god, I have a new idea. I've got to go try that. And of course, I'm wearing my really good clothes today. Oh, one day I will learn. So I'm going to... Woo! Okay, that's about five or six drops. That's all I'm willing to risk for this. Let's put that in there. Let's see what that does when I mix it up. And again, because it's extremely liquidy, both the medium, the Mod Podge, is very liquidy compared to the other two that I was using. And the high flow is very liquidy. It's kind of a pastel pink. See, the Mod Podge dries clear, but I guess it, it, I'm just going to put I have to. Sorry. <laughs> I have to do it. All right. All right. Put the expensive paint aside. All right. I promise this will be the last experiment in this video. I don't know if you can see that very well. Ooh, where is that? Up, up, up. 
Nope, I can't, you can't see it. But it's actually kind of a bubblegum pink. You know, oh, my freaking autofocus camera. Let me fix that. Go away. There we go. There we go. Oh, I did it again. Go away. There we go. Pain in the butt. Um, All right. So we have a really thin bubblegum pink. Let's see if we can just pour this. I'm hoping, just because of the thinness of it, that it will definitely, definitely level off a little bit thinner than the other ones have, just because they were thicker. Let's see. Let's just pull it out a bit so we can get more of a skin. And then this will be the last experiment. So that actually kind of looks like Pepto-Bismol. I don't know if you can see that. I'm looking at my monitor and it looks really washed out, but this is the exact color of Pepto-Bismol. So I'm going to pull this out so we could get a nice edge to the skin. And we will see in a couple of hours what happens? <laughs> So it's only been a couple of minutes since uh, I ended the last video. Um, uh, as this started to jellify, I started actually pulling it out with my fingers to try and make it a little bit uh, more skin-like. And then I figured if I'm going to do this final experiment, I might as well do it good. I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the Mod Podge and a few drops of the Dioxazine Purple and I'm just going to spread it out beside here without the hot glue just to see what that would have done. Like I really have a feeling that it's just the height of the hot glue that's not giving me the nice skin. So, you know, I'm not going to get that nice clear uh, hot glue inside this really nice skin. That's Obviously this isn't going to happen, but I thought at the very least I could spread some of this out and just see what it would have liked uh, would have it would have looked like without the hot glue in it so I figured you know what I'll put it down and they can dry at the same time and then we'll be able to finish up this video series um, permanently <laughs> I don't think I could come up with any other ideas. I think that the whole hot glue idea was an interesting idea, but I don't think I'm going to get the results that, I, that I'm that i looking for in my head, which is to have this nice, thin, semi-translucent skin, whoops, like this yellow one, but with a clear design in it, which, which is what I was trying to go for. So I'm just going to put a few drops of this Dioxazine purple in here. One, two, three, four. Ah, five, six. That's so liquidy. All right. Just gonna mix this up. Ooh. Just a little bit. And then I'm gonna scrape this out here. going to smooth it out really thin and see what kind of a skin I would get without the height of the hot glue in it. Just for kicks and giggles if it's going to all be drying at the same time. There we go. So a nice kind of a pastel Easter egg purple. And we'll see what happens. We'll let them both dry. I'm noticing here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but 
as this is drawing around the edge, it's darkening back to its original pink color. So the Mod Podge pastelizes it just because it's white, but as it starts to dry clear, I guess the, the color starts to return. I was noticing that on the yellow one that I did, um, that it kind of returned back to its bright yellow color and didn't stay that pastel-y color. Anyways, that's me. So that's it. This ex Once this is dry, the experiment will be done. I also wanted to mention that the ones that I did in the first video with the 3D paint, when I made the skins, um, it's been at least five days since I made that video, maybe six, and these have not cleared any. So this was the one that had the matte, uh, liquid matte medium in it. This is the one that was done with the varnish. It cleared a little bit more, but certainly not clear, clear what I was expecting. And this one with the texture, I noticed that it's still got kind of a cloudy effect in the back. So I guess it will never get any clearer than that. I just wanted to update you on that. So we're going to let this cure for a few hours and uh, see what our final results are. Hey, so there's good news and there's bad news. Um, the bad news is, is that I'm leaving in less than 10 hours to go on a one week road trip with my husband and uh, I really wanted to get this video up before I left because I'm not going to be able to post any more videos until after October 13th because I won't be at home. So this wasn't drying fast enough so I started to take a heat gun to it. I may have um, kind of ruined it a little bit. <laughs> However, there is good news. So this one here, the purple one, this is the one that um, I put with no hot glue underneath it. And I really like how I get kind of like a sheer glaze. And again, I rushed, as you know, to put it together and slap it out. Um, I kind of really like how that creates a nice sheer coloring. So I might, when I come back from my one week hiatus, I might do a few of these, like seriously do a few of these kind of really thin skins to see if I can create something that will give me some sheer color. And I'm going to try and mix them. This one here, which is still a little bit warm because I took the heat gun to it. There's a couple of things I want you to notice. I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to take my autofocus off for a second so I can do it manually and get a nice, see if I can get a nice crisp image. Okay, so here's what I like. Um, it's not completely dry here in the middle. Um, it hasn't, uh, the opaqueness hasn't gone away yet. However, I've started to notice around the edges here that it's really becoming quite clear and transparent. So that's what I was looking for. Because I was frigging around with it so much, the color is not uniform. One of the things I do like about this is that the, the glue gave me kind of like a wire aperture underneath, which is kind of what I was looking for, was that you would see kind of a clearness and then you would have this little bit of color over it. Now the edges are completely destroyed because I've been frigging around with this. I've been turning it back and forwards trying to dry the back too. As you can see, see, so it's still not completely dry here. But I think that um, if I was to give it a chance to sit overnight and this would become more like this, I would get something fairly close to what I was looking for, which was um, a sheer bit of color with a clear design in it. And I, I really like the way that that hot glue has kind of created almost like a wire aperture. So this is going to be the end of this experiment because I'm leaving and I want to get something up. However, this last portion of the experiment was um, successful enough to make me want to try to recreate this again 
um, when I get back with a different title and a, and a totally different, um, it won't be an experiment anymore. I'm, I've learned enough now where I think I can actually do a technique video. I really want to recreate this. This is what I was looking for, where the medium in between the, the hot glue sank down into it and created a nice sheer color that, even though this is a little bit sticky, that you'd be able to see through. And I think that when I come back in a week, this will be completely clear. And even by tomorrow morning, it'll be completely clear. But I mean, I'm getting up at six o'clock in the morning. I'm leaving at seven. I'm not going to have time to do any video editing. So I'm going to do that now. And I think that this portion of this very long video, I'm going to consider a success. I'm going to see if I can get a better color distribution on this one. And I'm going to see if I can do another hot glue gun aperture and create another skin and let it sit by itself without touching it and frigging with it and see if I can get this but with a nicer color distribution. Um, I'm actually really happy with these two. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up or press the subscribe button down here. Um, I would love to hear your comments. I would love to hear any of your ideas. I think that over the course of the next few weeks, while I finish up some paintings and we do some art alongs, I'm also I'm going to come back to this and maybe expand on it a little bit. Um, and, and I hope that you'll join me. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later. Bye.